Jesus said, a woman goes through labor with intense pain, but that pain is turned to joy the moment she sees the child. What kind of favor is this? You are highly favored. I need to carry, carry. Carry Mary, this pain is only for a season, but your name will be inscribed in the scriptures forever. That you are the child, son, or the mother of the Most High. Mary, you will have the grace to teach Jesus how to walk. Mary, you will have the grace to teach Jesus how to write. Mary, you will create a perfect atmosphere for the Son of God, the creator of the world, so that you will raise him up. Mary, your appointed time has come. She was willing to go through shame to fulfill her destiny. Shame will come. Pain will come. But that is favor. Don't mistake that. Thirteen fifteen. Nowadays people don't want to listen to this. This girl was listening. Huh? She had angelic encounter. This is what the beauty of Mary. The news was from the realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit starts thinking Kairos. You are always worried about Kronos. There's something God has planned for you. Tonight he's going to reveal that. The more you wait, he will deposit that. That's what is happening to youngsters who are hanging around here. Lingering. Lingering. He will begin to tell you what's on the other side. This is what I have for you. All that Mary said is one line. She didn't know theology. No Bible was there. No prophet. She had no connections. No phone, for phone calls. She said one line. What is that line? I'm your servant. <laughs> I'm your servant. I know the rabbis will come and question me. I cannot tell the Holy Spirit made me pregnant. Nobody will believe that. How can a ghost make me pregnant? They will say you slept with somebody. They're going to tell some horrendous story about me. No problem. I am your servant. Let it be to me. Tonight is that prayer. Will you answer the call? Lord, I'm your servant. Whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do. Let it be to me according to us. Whatever you're planned, if I have to carry a child, I will do it. I will not abort. I know this pain is for nine months. I will run away to Elizabeth's house. I will safeguard the deposit. Some of you have got a calling. Don't abort it. Don't go to wrong places. The wrong places they will put something in you and cause you to abort the plan of God. If she would have gone to her mother and father's house, finished, that mother would have said, you ready? Give me some tablets and gone. You need to go to the right place when God gives you a vision, a dream, a calling. That's why God brought you here. Because this place, from day one, the Lord has been speaking about your calling. This place fertilizes and nurtures your calling. Go to Elizabeth's house. Remain there. Because what has happened to her has removed her disgrace. And the Lord is, is with her. Luke 1 37. With man all these things are impossible. But with God all things are possible. Mary it is possible at 15 to have the son of God in you. Mary don't about the plan of God. Same thing with you. Don't about God's plan. Hold it. Hold it. Pain yes. People, people sneering and jeering it. Hold it. They are laughing. What happened to your studies? What happened to all this? You are holding it. What happened? You are not coming to movies now. What happened? What happened? Hold it. I am having the calling of God. I cannot. I cannot. Watch this. Do this. Get on to this. No. I cannot. That which is in me is literally the answer to the world. I cannot. Tonight is a very simple message. My wife was telling this the other day. The call of God is like a ringtone. Can somebody ring? Give me a ringtone, please. Put a ringtone and give me a phone. All our people are tired also, I think, you know. Where's your Bible is gone, book is gone, he's doing Jericho round, I think. Yeah. Put a phone, ringtone, ringtone, and give me.
Tonight's service is actually a ringtone of God. That's how the service is designed. You can do only two things when a call comes. In fact, three. If you're an Indian, you have three options. If you're a normal person, you have two options. What do you call it? If you don't want to press decline, if you say yes, you. But if you keep missing the call like Titanic, you will sink. We are famous for missed call. Some of you have missed the call of God many times. Can I tell you, this voice will not come many times. This is the right age to answer the call. The call of God comes in Kairos moment, appointed time. If Mary would say, not me, not this time, finished, the Lord will have someone else. Saul from the least of tribe, God picked him up and said, you be the king. Let me work with you. But correct time, he rejected the command of God. He did not get an opportunity again. For some of you, I don't know whether you will get another call. But tonight is a beautiful time. The moment you begin to say yes, heaven starts orchestrating things for you. It's just waiting for one yes. Be it unto me according to your word. Just then her womb had a shaking. The spirit of God began to take some life material and breathe into the womb of Mary. Suddenly some kicking happened. Suddenly, suddenly the embryo came. Suddenly some biological changes. How? The moment she said yes, things begin to work. Same thing with you. The moment you say yes, Lord. Finished. Heaven is under operation. Call of God. Tonight, either you can answer or decline. Jesus was walking. What tense is that? Present continuous tense. Jesus was walking, just like I'm walking. So that means Jesus was going from point A to point B. Very simple thought. Jesus is going from point A to point B. And while he was walking, he saw two brothers, Peter and Andrew. What they were doing? Casting. Casting is present continuous. They're about to cast the net into the sea. Why? They wanted money. They were businessmen, fishermen. Correctly, when they were casting, what came? The call came. What is the call? Come, follow me. Watch this. Jesus is not standing, not staring, not requesting, not disco dancing. He's just calling and walking. While he's walking, that's I like that picture because Jesus is walking. And as he's walking, he say, come. Now, if you sit in the boat and go for three days fasting, what will happen is you'll miss Jesus. <laughs> Some of you sitting down and say, no, no, Jesus calling is there, but, but let me be 25, 27, 32. Right now, I need to be a student. Right now, I need to do this, all that. I'm not asking you to leave your studies and all that. Huh? You need to go back to your school. That's the main thing. We will send you. Come follow me. If you delay, the problem is you'll miss the footsteps of Jesus. That's the problem with calling. If he calls you, you answer. You cannot miss the call. And later you try the same number, it's not getting connected. Once it happened like that Canberra Bank. I applied for something, that Canberra Bank people called me, and I did not recognize the number. After that, I'm calling, 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 nobody's answering the phone. Then I went to that lady and said, see, what, this is what happened. They said, yeah, we called you. You didn't answer, finished. No one will answer the call from here. When we get time, we will call you. That's all. If you miss following the Lord right now, they're gone, it's over. Jesus did not stand there and beg, no one is there to serve me. Please, Pedro, I'll give you one 500, come. Please come. Nobody I will tell. You do your side business, come and follow me. 
begging, begging, begging. No, he didn't beg. Call of God is not begging. Sometimes call of God comes as an interruption. Whenever there is an interruption in your life, it's a divine intervention. Divine intervention. I go, I'll to leave everything in Goa. Jesus said something. Let me hurry up and bring things to a close. Jesus said, Peter, I've seen something about you in the realm of the spirit. What I'm seeing right now, Peter, is, let me speak only on Peter. I don't see you as having a fishing business and getting money, putting a bank account, settling your family, all that is okay, Peter. But that's not what I see from here. Peter, I'm seeing you from thousand days from now that you will stand somewhere in a meeting and 3,000 men will be there. You'll catch them in one day. You become a fisher of men. The word fisher of men is not even there in dictionary. So he's able to see that. God is telling the same thing to you tonight. He's calling you by name. He's calling you by name. But Anvitava, he's telling Anvitava, Anvita, this is what I'm seeing about you. You are going here and you're looking all in your chronology that should happen, this should happen. But I've seen your life three years from now. And I'm going to give you an invitation. He says, if you follow me, who will make you? We are thinking we should make ourselves. How to be a worship leader? How to be past? How to be? But you leave it to him. I will make you. Your job is to follow me. Leave everything of making, creating, forming to me. Lord, I'm unschooled, untrained. Lord, I'm very poor. Lord, I cannot I'm very raw. I'm a fisherman. I cannot be a preacher. That you leave it to me, man. Are you willing to follow? Let go and follow. Some of you are stuck in the boat for too long. The Lord has seen. The realm of the spirit knows you. Your job is to just touch that frequency. Touch that realm. Yes, Lord. That word yes, Lord is very powerful in the spirit. God gets as if he wants permission. But God gets authorization the moment you say amen. Even when the preaching is going on, the moment you say amen, you authorize heaven to impact your heart. That's the power of amen. That's why we say amen after every prayer. Because heaven is under operations. When the moment you say yes Lord, do it Lord, heal Lord, I give Lord. That's the power of God. This is what happened to them. They what immediately, immediately, tonight is the night, immediately they left their net and followed him. They did not wait even a second. Forget about what God, are you willing to answer the call tonight? Tonight. I'm not telling go and think tomorrow, day after, no. Tonight, immediately, they left their net. They forgot, okay, fine, they did not even think, my family, my this, my, no. Call, you leave everything to him. What about this? Leave that. What about my future? Leave it. How will I be? Leave it. How will I be, Lord? I'm a virgin. I'm not married. You know biology? You know nine standard, eight standard biology, Lord? Do you know how asexual and asexual reproduction? Do you know something about it? How can I? Leave that to me. I need your authorization. I need you to say yes. God begins to work. Those are the men God is looking for. If you're high-headed, too much, my family, my studies, my father's business, all that, if you're there, okay, pa. Please, have dinner and go. don't simply go. Let me close with all this I'm leaving. Look at this girl. Her name is Malala Yusuf Zai. The best part of this picture is she's not wearing trendy clothes but yet she became famous how i don't know all that black dots are there i don't know whether too much makeup is there pakistani girl you know, sometimes i get to meet pakistanis outside the country cleanly combed hair head covering look at them so every day i'm seeing the meeting our girls not one cover the head also not that you need to cover but this girl is covering why she's covering? Because probably just traditional for her. 
Not that she's spiritual woman. I'm just making a silly comment. But this girl has got the best prize ever. Nobel Peace Prize. Or Nobel Prize. When she was 17, what impressed me was not the award, but that which led her to this. This is a date of birth. She's a generation Z, shaking the world. She's from this place called Swath Valley. I did not know where was Swath Valley until I started reading about her. Anybody heard of Swath Valley before? During her childhood, Afghanistan people, there was a terrorist movement called Taliban. Taliban used to come to this region and bomb, loot, do so many things. And they wanted to bring their own system of governance here. Malala's daddy was a school principal. He was a founder of a school. They had a school. In fact, they came and bombed the school. Building on went away. And this girl, as a small girl, she said, my daddy is a school principal. Children are coming, poor children are coming to learn. And now we don't have education for the children. She said, did some statistics and found that some 60 million children around the world have no education. So she started fighting for education for children. She started speaking, no children need to go to school. Look at the Taliban. They came and bombed the school. She became a voice. Slowly she started writing essays. She started giving radio shows. And very soon, BBC caught her and said, wow, this girl is speaking something very nice about education. So they featured her on the radio, BBC radio. These Taliban people came to know that this girl is speaking against them and also promoting education. And Taliban girls should not study whatever their law is. So one day they say, this girl is Rambo Pesra. <laughs> so they sent one fellow to say, find out who that girl is and finish her off. So one terrorist has come to Swat Valley that day to kill her. So this all this, she was a school student, probably I don't know which grade, 10th grade or something. So they all finished the school. They're in the school bus. As they're sitting in the school bus, one terrorist comes with a gun. And let's read the story. On October 9th, 2012, a Taliban gunman shot Yusuf Zai as she rode home on the bus after taking an exam in Pakistan's Swath Valley. The masked gunman shouted, which one of you is Malala? Because he didn't know the girl. He said, show me Malala, speak up, otherwise I'll shoot all of you. So somebody showed her, and on being identified that this is Malala, he shot her. She was hit with one bullet which went through her head, neck, and ended up in the shoulder. So it went like this, head, neck, and shoulder, neck and shoulder. Immediately she was rushed to the hospital. They connect the surgery, they pull the bullet out, they, they had, because that's a valley, you know, they kept on pushing her here and there. And somehow she survived. All because she fought for the education of children. Children have to study. Children have to study. Kept on speaking in spite of knowing the Taliban have bombed the school, threatened the dad, threats were coming, but yet she was willing. When she got the Nobel Prize, I saw that 15-20 minute lecture that she gave. She begins with, the first line she says is, Bismillah irrahman irrahim. Getting a Nobel Prize, she quotes and gives praise to her God. What a passion for education. She was willing to face bullets for her vision. Today you are alive because somebody died for you naked on the cross and he is sending you as his apostles with a call. We 
we are scared even to tell Jesus to our friends how come this girl is willing to get bullets for the sake of her vision what is it education there is something more worth to die for than education look at what happened to your school education look at your character has anything changed as it much is schools preaching the gospel that will save a soul from hell we don't have take the message of the gospel pay the price if this girl can face bullets and yet get an award and give praise to her god what about you is there is there that strength and passion in you this is one of her quotes I had two options every time she wanted to promote this education. I had two options. One was to remain silent and wait to be killed. Everybody started threatening me, don't speak, don't speak, don't speak. If you speak, you will die, you will be killed, you will be killed, you will be killed. Second one was, I speak and then be killed. First is, remain silent and then they will kill me. Second is, I speak up and they will kill me. I chose the second and I decided to speak up. I knew the bullets will come when I spoke up. Why? It's my passion. Is there passion in you to speak about the law? Now if you do this will happen. Where are the bold ones? Where are the Daniels? Where are the Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego who can shut the mouth of the king? Is it only a story in the Old Testament or can it reoccur now? We need some passionate young people dipped in liquid fire of the Holy Ghost. They are the answer to this generation. You are the answer. Tonight is a night to answer the call. Answer the call. Even if it means, Lord, one life I have, I just pour it out like a drink offering. My favorite story is when I went to this part. The gun is also not showing. This place is called Jaffna. In 2011, so we went to Colombo, we went to Jaffna and Kalmanai, Batikolo. And so we landed up in Jaffna and then we did a meeting. Suddenly, a senior of mine spotted me in the church. He said, hey, Sonny, what are you doing here in Sri Lanka? I said, no, I'm traveling with the team. He said, no, 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 no. Nice to have you tomorrow. Come for lunch. So I went for lunch. This is the family. And he remembered there's a Sri Lankan couple who came and studied in the Bible college, which is down the road. And he remembers these two, his children were so tiny in 1998, I think. I used to take match tuition for them. He remembers. He used to call me, can you teach some science and maths? So some days I went to his house and started teaching a little bit. Ali. So he said, come home, have a good Sri Lankan lunch. I said, okay, I'll come. So next day I'm going. Those days in 2011 in, in Colombo, every 100 feet you have two young fellows holding AK-47. I've never seen that in my life. Okay, I'm walking, my legs are shivering. That fellow was pointing like this. Have you ever gone where gun was pointed? Are you full green dress they're wearing and having a gun? I am walking with Jesus, blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord. Tonight, Father, Lord, if you take me, my wife and children, I dedicate them in your hand. Father, thank God I'm able to see my wife wearing a pink dress today. It's scary, brother. It's really scary. So I go to his house, wife, his name is Amrita, his name is David, both are pastoring a church. Then I'm waiting for the lunch, they make me sit down, I'm alone. I told the team, took permission and went. So I'm, I'm, I'm they're preparing dinner, I'm just looking at their you know, showcase and I find a Bible. And this Bible looked very extraordinary, very different from the usual. So I take the Bible and I ask Pastor David, he said, why this Bible is like this? Then he said, oh, 
Let me tell you a story. And you tell this story everywhere, Pastor Sunny. Wherever you meet young people, you tell. So as we pray tonight, I want to tell this story. He said, those days, there was severe war between Singula and the Tamils. The Tamil people wanted to form a union called LTTE to fight against the Singula. The LTTE people did not like the Singala. They were at war. So that was the story. One night, 31st night, or probably one of the fasting prayer night, one Sunday. I don't know whether it's 31st. I need to be corrected there. So one night, we had an all night prayer. Somebody from Colombo region, who was a Singala, came as a guest preacher to this place. And his name was Disanayake. Some second name is Disanayake. So when you moment you know is Disanayake, it means it is singular. So this pastor was a guest speaker for Sunday. So he preached on Sunday morning and he said night prayer, we will have a night prayer. So he wanted to also be there for the night prayer and minister. Those days not many vehicles because war was happening. It's a 30 years civil war. And so this pastor said, uh, Brother David, um, what I will do, since you, these, these children were tiny. Where is that? These children were tiny. These two, these are later. So tiny children. So he said, uh, in fact, this girl was not born. He was there. Jordan was there. So he said, at nine o'clock, I will come in the car. Don't worry about the route. I've got a van. I will drive and come and pick you up. So in my mind, I know that place because I've been there. So he said, uh, I'll pick you up. Uh, I'll keep the first uh, seat empty so that Amrita and Jordan can sit down here and uh, I will put other people behind. So he was picking up people for the night prayer. So he said, one boy, so there, one of the boys is Sister Amrita's brother. All the young fellows, teenagers, all the young fellows at the back, all packed up. So one seat is available. They need to share. Whole family needs to share that one seat. So that one seat is empty. So Pastor Dissanayake comes, 8.30, 8.45. And so he's on the way. So he said, um, it's very chilly outside. So he told his wife, you be in the house. Once the van comes here to the spot, I will give you a signal. When you bring Jordan, we'll go in the car. Plan is set. 8.30. 8.30 because 9 o'clock is the pickup. 8.30 Pastor David comes out and he's standing at a spot where there's a turn. So he's standing. It's night. No street lights there. As he's standing, two guns are put on his head. Somewhere LTT people come. They have followed the movements and they got to know that some singala preacher has come because they don't like singala. And he told me this firsthand. He said, the moment two guns were put here, it's like as if two demons sat on me. I started shivering. First thing they asked, who is this singala man? I began to stutter and said, sir, please don't kill him. He's a good man. He's a master. He's come to pray. He's come to pray. Please, 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 good man. Don't do anything. Don't, because they, they, it's war. It is not a silly fight. It's not some two young fellows doing some call. No, it is war. They are almost about to pull the trigger. I told you, I'm seeing two, two fellows. I'm getting leg shivery. Just imagine if gun is pointed on your head. It just like hardly takes an offer. AK-47, huh? It's a machine gun. You pull the trigger, it keeps going. There's no mercy there. It's not double barrel, one to go, to go, nothing like that. He's crying, freezing. As the two people are standing, suddenly he finds another two come. 
They're about to pull the trigger. I don't know whether they want to kill him. Another two people come and join him. They both are having two fellows, four guys, two and two. Two and two are having a small argument. Should we kill him? Don't kill him. One gang is telling, don't kill him. One gang is telling, kill him. This fellow is our fellow, no Tamil man. Sir, don't kill him. Sir, don't, sir. No, that man is very nice. He's a pastor. He's a good man. He, we're having prayer in the night. We're praying for the blessing of all the Tamil people. Jaffna, please, please, please. He's begging. So, since the both of the LGT group people are arguing, at last they decide. So, he hears a voice because he's unable to see the walls. He hears a voice. They tell him, get up. Run for your life. If we see you turn back, you are killed. So he got up. In his own words, he's telling, I'm trying to run, but I cannot run. With all my strength, I'm pushing and running for my life. As he's running, he says, Pastor, this Nike is coming with this man. And he's about to take and stop there. And after that, there's a U-turn, small curve. He comes there. The moment he comes there, Pastor David hears the spray of bullets on the van. He's screaming at the top of his voice after hearing the sound of the bullets. The whole neighborhood came out. These four LTT jumped on their jeep and they went away. All the people neighborhood they came. The van tried to escape by taking a turn, but it slightly took a turn and went off the cliff. That area is all mountains. Slowly went off and van was standing there. They all run to pull the people out. They see Pastor Disnake, his skull is opened up. He's dead on the spot. So there's no way to, doors are jammed, they're pulling the bodies out. So behind are three young people. One of them is the brother of Sister Amrita. As they were pulling the body out, these boys had a small little life left. They couldn't take them to any hospital. Hospital are not there. As they're pulling the body out, these boys with little life that is left in them, because they're sprayed with bullets, they're telling, Lord, we serve you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I serve you. Lord, these are there, the whispering, 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 last phrases of their life. And this is the way they're being welcomed into the corridors of heaven. Into the realm, Lord, I love you. With bullets all over. Lord, I love you. Lord, I serve you. Lord, I want to live for you. And as they were pulling the brother out, his Bible was on the chest. And the bullets raised through the Bible into his chest. Eventually, all of them died. And they took this Bible and kept it in the house. That day I'm holding this Bible and I turn to the Bible. Every page has got a bullet mark. Every page. And I'm holding the Bible, I'm telling to myself, will I have the same passion? And even if the bullet has to go through, I will still say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I serve you. These young fellows spilled their very blood for the sake of the gospel. How much more God has done to you? Lord, I love you. Lord, I serve you. The Bible pressed into the chest to say, no matter what comes, I'm not going to leave your word. My calling is you. My assignment is you. My passion is you. Till the last day of my life, I love you, Lord. You are my desire. No one else but you. I give myself away. What a way to end the life. That boy died, but his story never died. I am still preaching. He didn't tell me. His Bible lives on. It lives on in my heart and it challenges me. 
I don't want to don't want to stoop down to the world. One life I have. I wonder what they will tell about me when I'm in the grave. I don't know what they will tell about my passion. I'm praying that something that will put a smile on God's face will be said about me. Close your eyes this evening. The call of God. The call of God. All that it takes is to say, Lord, in the days of my youth, at 16, like Josiah, I shut down everything to seek you. Like Mary, be it unto me, according to your word. If you have heard the voice of God, and you say, I don't want to lose an opportunity tonight. And if you say, I've heard many warnings. Tonight, Lord, I'm coming back. All it takes is one thought to take a turn. One thought can change your life.